everybody. It's Christine here with the Unknown Humans Remain True Crime Podcast. We are here with case number 32 from the state of Tennessee. And we're looking at a date that the body was found. This is from August 5th, 2023. So that's pretty recent. If you're watching this right right now, I'm recording this. It's October. I thought, let me just, you know, we I've been focusing so much on the older cases. I said, let me let me see if there's some things we can do with some newer cases. And I pulled this one from Tennessee. So let's get into the details and see what we can find out and see if we can identify this male. All right. So this case is a UP107847 from NAMIS. And the body was found August 5th, 2023 in Knoxville, Tennessee. I have been there. Very cool. Uh, love Tennessee. Okay, so what are they going to tell us here? So the case number, we've got a medical examiner case number. Um, it says it's a male, biological sex male, race, race and ethnicity uncertain. Uh, an adult, estimated year of death, 2023. So it was, the body was found August 5th. Um, so that would have been eight months into 2023. So that they're assuming that's pretty recent. Also, the height, 5'7", the weight, they cannot estimate. So the circumstances here, uh, of course, unidentified deceased. The body was again found on August 5th, 2023. The NAMIS case was created on September 4th, 2023. So that's they're getting faster, and as you know, unfortunately, our cases are climbing, 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 um, but they're getting more folks in here to hopefully get identified, so that's great. And this is in Knoxville, Tennessee. They have the zip code as 37923. We'll take a look at the map in just a second. There are no GPS coordinates listed, and the circumstances say... Homeless individuals found the decedent in a field they were walking through. So what does that tell you? What's the first thing that sparks to mind? Uh, maybe that's a path or an area frequented by homeless individuals, right? One of the things that we have to um, ask, and I tell you guys, always pay attention to your first in instinct, to your gut instinct. I don't know if you ever remember when you were in school and you were taking a test and they would tell you not to think too much about it because if you changed your answer, uh, typically your first answer was correct, right? So I always like to go through, when I go through these and and make notes on um, any type of case that I'm going through, I like to go, it, go through it first just with no um, preconceived notions in mind. I try to tell people no matter what the type of case is, I said, please don't tell me too much. I just want to see what stands out to me. So you might find this helpful whether you're listening to this or looking at it online. And the first thing, one of the things that stands out to me is they mentioned homeless individuals um, in a field they were walking through. So that could be, um, I'm thinking that that might be a heavily trafficked area or an area where the homeless folks uh, might have frequented. Uh, we're looking at August probably pretty hot still in Tennessee. Um, and so when we look at this now, this is not too old of a case, all right, from August to October. The first thought is nobody's reported this person missing, right? They haven't been identified. So, um, you know, we, it's, it could be a pretty strong indicator to consider that this person might be homeless too, right? Okay. So let's go down to the physical description. Hair color unknown. They don't really have anything too much here. Uh, there are two tattoos. One is a skull, and I'm sorry for the verbiage here, for the words, skull with rotting flesh on left leg. So I don't know if that's the description of the tattoo, that the tattoo had rotting flesh. Um... <laughs> You know, if that's the body condition, I don't think that that needed to be in there. But again, that's just my opinion. Um, and then they're across on the interior upper right arm. And we do have a photo here. We'll go into the images and documents because we also have what looks like a shirt here too in the images. So 
let's go down to the clothing and accessories clothing dark possibly blue t-shirt fruit of the loom size extra large on the body uh clothing red boxer briefs fruit of the loom size 2xb on the body okay so that could be um that's interesting so there's no other clothes and again this is just what struck strikes me where they where they and the clothing looks wet <laughs> so um it doesn't say anything about being found in water but i'm thinking somebody went swimming and so instead of swim trunks they're in their boxers and their t-shirt is wet i don't know that's just what's coming to me here right because it says it says decomposing but it says found in a field right it doesn't say anything about water but this clothing depending if it had rain this clothing if you're looking at these pictures we'll look at that let's go over to that uh they look really wet okay so the first thing is we're looking at some kind of i don't know if it's a i can't even tell kind of a skull um maybe that's what they mean because there's like drip marks on this skull kind of looks more like an alien to me sort of um i don't know how to describe it i see the nose and the eye holes very interesting but the eye shape makes me think it's more alien okay very interesting i don't know what to make of that okay so let's take a look at the t-shirt okay they're saying that this is a blue t-shirt but it looks very interesting too it it looks like it's a tie-dye shirt it's got okay and i'm thinking tennessee red do we have red clay but it looks like it was a beige basis with some dark blue tie-dye areas so that can be very very distinctive it's very interesting the way that this color is laid down I'm trying to zoom in a little bit um a way this color was laid down on this shirt i'm thinking i'm thinking it's like a beige army color uh shirt and we've got dark blue here almost looks like a tie dye very very interesting very interesting okay and then our um fruit of the loom okay we've got and they they definitely are are wet and um i haven't been to the coroner's office lately but i would hope they would un uh, remove the clothing before they hose the body down um maybe not but this clothing all looks wet so i think that's very interesting here so let me see what i can pull up on the map okay when i click on the link right in the map and we've got our zip code is 37923 uh, and it pulls up right here on google 37 nine two three i don't know if that is in the center of that zip code uh but remember i said water and we've got this little lake ish thing that um, if you're if you're watching on youtube you can see what i'm talking about if you're listening sorry uh it it um looks like a little pond or something let me go to satellite behind um some apartments that's interesting and then it it was talking about on the plane map they were calling it sinking sinking creek but then i'm not really seeing that on the very hard to see on the satellite image um i don't know what homeless area would be here right here although we do have this looks like this vacant um, wooded area here between fox lonis road northwest and dutch town road let me go back to the the map yes yeah, so we have that pond um i'm not seeing any other serious water 
anywhere here. Um, interesting. So we don't know. That's what, what is not really helpful on this public facing. We don't know where, um, where the homeless people would be living. Hopefully they would not be living in this particular neighborhood, but we do have that pond area right there. Um, hopefully none are not bathing in there, but that sink, sinking creek, uh, can't hardly see it be because of the trees on the satellite. Um, I'm just looking out to see now, um, not too far to the east of that. We've got a Walmart super center and a Sam's club. Um, looks like a big shopping center right across the street from that. Um, also directly, well, not, I don't know how far, maybe a couple thousand feet, Lowe's Home Improvement, Corporate Square, some hotels. Um, very interesting. Okay. So where were the homeless, where were the homeless people? Let me see if I can pull up that zip code and see exactly what encompasses that zip code. Okay, so here we have this little zip code boundary. It comes all over here down to, um, we've got to try to figure out where this is, Hidden Valley. Okay, there's that little, there's that little uh, pond in the apartment. We're seeing the little creek running here. And we've also got some other water here on Cheryl Boulevard. Let's see if I can get back to that okay so that's this water over here on the golf course hopefully they won't be having too many people over there we've also got what looks like some water over here at Renbor up there um, where is that water I'm not seeing it here I am not seeing water up there Let me go back that is up Cedar Bluff and by this interchange I am not seeing I'm not seeing water up there okay so let's go back what else do we have here the Cheryl Boulevard okay it comes all the way down here to this Ebenezer Road um, Westland Drive. So it is going to come all the way down here. Where is Westland? That's Williams. Okay, this Westland Drive, and it's showing it's showing some water here on this zip code map, but I am not too seeing too much of. Not seeing too much of that. Yep. So I don't know how much we're going to do here with. Because um, it says it didn't give GPS coordinates. So maybe. I don't know if it put it. Let's look right back here at this zip code map. Did it put it kind of right in the middle of it? Who knows. And then it goes pretty far north up there too. So yeah. I don't know what we're going to tell from from just this that's the that's the map but but the body looks you you guys call in and let me know but that that um that stuff looks the clothing looks wet um definitely wet definitely like a tie-dye um found the decedent in a field they were walking through so we could also go through and look at the field information um to see where that might be or where the homeless is. Obviously, I'm not in Knoxville, but if I was in Knoxville, you know, you can ask the homeless population where do, where does everybody um, hang out. And this tattoo um, would be very distinctive, very distinctive. Um, and then the clothing. So this is pretty recent. Maybe we can figure something out and match it up with missing persons. Now, just something to think about if you're going to go into the missing persons database also. Um, if this person is homeless, chances are they've been homeless for quite some time. So you're really going to have to adjust and, and do a wide berth, so to speak, on 
when they would have been reported missing because many times the homeless, the people that whether choosing to be homeless or not choosing to be homeless, um, you know, discontinue conversations with their family. Um, so that can be the situation. Or maybe we just got a gentleman that went swimming somewhere um, on a hot day in his skivvies and something happened. Okay. Um, and where has he been reported missing? So lots of good stuff that we could follow up here on this one. Alrighty, so once again, I want to thank you for your support trying to identify these unknown humans who remain. Uh, uh, the last book in the series that just came out from our podcast episode number 25 here, Fabric of Deceit. Um, I think it's again a really great story bringing attention to what is happening here, raising money so we can assist law enforcement. I, I just um, got off the phone a couple days ago with the police chief needing help for a deceased individual. And it's great to be able to say, uh, I've got a community of people who support this and we're able to help. What do you need? And I'm able to do that through the purchase and support of these books, the likes and the sharing. Um, and the purchase of all the merchandise here on the uh, shop.ponytailpublishing.com site. So thank you once again. I will talk to you, unfortunately, uh, very soon because we've got a lot of these cases. And uh, let's see what we can find out. Let's see what we can do for this person. And I hope you can um, enjoy the rest of your week. Talk to you soon.